Sweet. And now for the Moneratopia Price Report. Hey, guys. Yo, GM hey, body. body. What's going on, man? GM, GM. Bro, your future's so bright. <laughs> Gotta wear shades. Did you say you're in Italy? Do I have that right? I am. Yeah, I'm in Sicily right now. Nice. Um, first, first time. It's beautiful. Have you ever been? No, I've actually never been to Europe. I keep saying I need to go to Europe. I need to go to Europe. You know, before it like totally collapses. <laughs> obviously, yeah, I don't know. I don't kidding. know. If, I mean, obviously, Europe is 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 beautiful in many ways, right? But I think there's there's a lot of a lot of things about it that that you may that you'll probably be perturbed with. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they've got the whole surveillance infrastructure going on. And, yeah, um, but There's at least a lot they're of efficient, left, right? Left wing ideology. Yeah, maybe go to some protests. I mean, or something. The, the the you know what I what I enjoy most about Europe is the cult, the culture, and kind of community and the and the food, right? Like their priorities, right? It's the priorities are are family, uh, you know, living and enjoying life and eating good good food right they don't they don't even they don't think of it as organic food right they they're you know a lot of them grow, grow their own food and it's what they expect and uh, unfortunately i'm that's, seeing even that kind of get be affected here um you know i, I go really? to europe that's, a lot that was supposed start... to be one of their big points right is that they've got like just naturally good food they have good water they don't use all these crazy pesticides they ban a lot of the practices that the u.s engages in but you're saying that's kind of mm -hmm. That's on, on the, like, not really. Well, I'll give you an example. So I'm in Sicily in kind of like a little town in like middle of freaking nowhere. Right. And, it's, and there's a, a big lot. Have you ever heard of Lytle shop? Like, uh, you know, Lytle? No. It's a big shopping uh -huh. market. It's kind of like a, it's a big chain and it's here. It's here in the town. And it's just like, I went in, it's like depressing. Like everybody like uses that, like relies on that now to get all their, all their groceries and stuff. Obviously, still have the little markets you still have you know i mean there's farms everywhere but i could just kind of see the beginning of what you know the trend right and when you have these big corporate companies come in it's like people start to rely on them next thing you know they're they're buying you know they're buying freaking chips and soda and some other you know other other crap or just crappy versions of what they're used to getting just because it's cheaper and it's acceptable. um so I don't know. I see, I see the I see those the 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 American ways kind of like starting to to wreak havoc on on Europe a little bit, but hmm. uh, we'll see. I mean, it, Sicily's should be a stronghold though, because it's such like it's such like a farming culture. But yeah, I don't know, man. Well, that's cool. A, man. Every corner Glad you found some time for a little of bit of uh, family, a little bit of travel, pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big deal because we got we got the whole fam together. It's not just the immediate fam. We have uh, it's kind of a big group of people. And uh, oh, so Mofo, you're Sicilian. Now, I get it now. Okay, this, this is all coming together all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian on my mother's side. Cool. All right, man. Um, yeah, take it away, buddy. Go for it. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we had. Um... There's a scare going on out there right now, guys. So don't panic. Don't be, the don't be afraid. Bogdanovs had a don't call from the underworld. Who what? The Bogdanovs had a call from the underworld. Oh shit! What? <laughs> Wait, are they both? What did they both pass? I thought that. Uh, I thought it was yeah, just the they're, one. They're both dead. <laughs> that probably only makes them more powerful, bro. Like that Honestly. was intentional. What is the scare, yeah. man? I've been completely off off the radar here what is what is the scare uh, well stocks stocks are down you know bitcoin is taking a well, crypto in general has taken a bit of a pullback it's not as severe the crypto pullback is not as severe but stocks are definitely down and then all the stuff we talk about we're going to really like cover a good bit of macro today um but all the macro all right, stuff that away. we look at like we're not unique here um no man like to sing out if you got questions you know interrupt me at any point um but uh yeah all the stuff that we look at here on the macro like we're not we're not singular here, right? Like we're not special. There's a bunch of other people looking at the same stuff because people, markets learn, right? That's what's happened. The markets have learned the macro signals that precede a recession. And so everyone's looking at these signals saying, wow, crap, um, it looks like we have something real that's that's coming up now. And it's it looks like all of the wheels are in motion now to push us that direction. 
Um, but you know, people people tend to be impatient and they tend to overestimate on the timing, right? These these kinds of things can take months to play out. So, um, yeah, we'll get to that. But there's you know there's a bit of a market scare going on right now. Um, I overall I think it's still <laughs> we're kind of getting closer and closer to those short hairs at this moment. So I think things are still fine, but um, you know you, you run higher and higher risk the farther and farther you push it. So uh, as always, let's go ahead and start with Monero and just uh, get a little get a quick look at our little stable coin here. Um, little stable coin, but with big, big use case, big potential. Um, yeah, so we've uh, we've also suffered some pullback with everyone else. This is the daily chart. You can see that we basically dropped here um, about 15, 16%. In my mind, um, I mean, I'd love to see a little bit more of this because I've been spending a shitload of Monero and I need to top up my bags. So maybe I shouldn't get greedy and I should just do it now since, you know, since we're actually down from, you know, from the top there by like 16%. In addition to, you know, kind of the 16% we're already down. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> UTXO says he who panics first panics best. Yeah, that's um, that's actually a good callback to um, uh, margin call where uh, where it's Kevin Spacey is like, we can't do this. We're going to crush the market. And then Jeremy Irons is like, he says, it's not panicking if you're the first one out the door. Um, so but, you know, also, if you're the first one out the door and the party's still going on, eh, you know, you might have lost some opportunity there. Okay, but anyways, with Monero, yeah, I, I honestly, <laughs> just for my own personal benefit, I would like to see this thing crash, dump hard down to the $130 area because I would love to, to refill some bags down there. Um, but, you know, Monero will do what it do um, right now, currently sitting at the very long-term moving averages there. Um, one thing we could celebrate just a little bit is that Monero is doing quite well uh, relative to Ethereum lately. Uh, that's the two-hour chart. I say quite well, you know, this is really we're we're still in recovery mode from from the crazy, you know, the crazy nonsense. Um, finally touching those areas right there. This is actually showing a little bit of strength. Um, you know, obviously, if the, if the crypto market just decides to take off, then, you know, this chart's going to go down down to the bottom there. But um, for the moment, you know, I still think that crypto needs consolidation. As we talked about a few weeks ago, things really need to consolidate for a while. Um, it could be a few months. Anyway, so I think it's we could actually like get into this zone right here, um, which would be that would be cool, right? Right, right now, technically speaking, you would call that resistance. Um, it kind of looks like it is resistance. Um, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, who's trading XMR versus Ethereum? I don't know, but I do know that a lot of us dabble in stable coins, so I know that that some of us do go back and forth between um, Ethereum and Monero. So, um, okay, Ethereum. Sorry, <laughs> Monero versus Bitcoin. Um, Let's see. We are on the eight hour chart here. Yeah. Eight hour chart. So basically not much has happened. We kind of broke down like we talked about. We've actually been holding on pretty strong relative to Bitcoin for, for the past week or so. Um, almost even tried to get back up into those into the blue bands here. In fact, in a technical standpoint, getting into these blue bands is actually uh, quite the sign of strength. You would normally expect um, this chart pattern to either continue down to the moving average cluster or the lower standard deviation cluster. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe the the worst of the roughness is behind us. Who knows what kinds of nonsense they have, you know, up their sleeve. Maybe the EU just finally goes full tyranny and just totally bans Monero from all exchanges and we get another, you know, pullback. I have no doubt that there is some trick that the nefarious bastards have up their sleeve to, to try and hit our price um, at the at the moments that um, they might otherwise be breaking out. So again, you know, kind of mixing up here the the technical analysis with sort of the fundamental and and obviously the the deep conspiracy speculation. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what Monero price looks like to me at the moment. Um, that, in a technical standpoint, I would expect us to continue pulling back just a little bit. Um, it seems like the price kind of wants to go down just a little bit more. Uh, again, highly speculative. Um, right now, it's basically kind of a double bottom, like a local do double bottom pattern. Um, we, we'll have to see what the next few days bring, right? If this thing kind of drifts lower over the next few days, pr probably price is meant to get down here to the 140, 130 area. Um, but uh, yeah, so that from an arrow price, that's what we're looking like. Transaction count, um, still flat, sitting around 25,000. No big deal. XMR nodes, still sitting around 12,000. Again, um, somehow this number dropped by like half. I guess they changed the way they do their algorithm. I don't think I don't think that half the Monero network was just like, oh, I'm fucking sick of running a node. Forget it. Um, so <laughs> probably they just they just changed something there. And, and I, I can't remember. I think it was Fluffy Pony posted on Twitter. Like there's another there's another website that keeps track of this. And I think they're 
they're also estimating somewhere around like 10,000, 12,000 Monero nodes. So probably that's more the correct number. You know, obviously by consensus, you know, we just go by consensus since that's such a powerful way of knowing what to believe. Obviously that's, I'm being sarcastic there. Um, okay, so let's take a pause here on cryptocurrency. Um, we're looking at Monero and let's go take a look at the macro. Um, we'll, we'll start with the stock market, which isn't exactly macro. It's, you know, risk, risk tech. But I want to show you the reason we're going to look at the macro is because the stock market has just done two weeks of pullback to the tune of about 12%. Let's do one more check on that. 12%, 12%, 12.5%. 12 yeah, let's we'll just say 12%. Okay, so um, the NASDAQ is down 12%. The S&P 500 dropped. Yeah, it's only 7%. Still, though, all right, so there's a scare going on out there right now. Um, we want to put this into context. We really want to understand what's what's coming, what's happening in front of us. So let's just start from, like, the very top-level stuff. The FOMC, um, or the Federal Reserve, had a, had a FOMC meeting this past week on Wednesday, um, and they said that they could lower rates as soon as, um, as soon as next meeting. Now, next meeting would imply September 17th. So between now and then, we're going to get two um two cpi numbers right so we're going to get the cpi for august and then they're going to release um the cpi uh in september as well so we'll get two cpi readings if those numbers drift down even a little bit there's a really solid chance the fed's going to lower rates um so in the immediate term you know that's going to be good for markets on the news on that fed news what you can see here is that um so we'll just look at the tenure right so you can see the tenure um, starting on on Wednesday, uh, or sorry, on Thursday, um, the tenure just started dropping, right? Because people are expecting that the Fed's going to lower rates. The other thing too is that the S and P five hundred is, um, yeah, sorry, the, the stock markets fell, and so you have to understand there's this inverse relationship between risk and bonds. Bonds are the safe asset. Bonds are the asset that you go to when you're afraid of risk. Um, and then so when a bunch of people buy bonds, the rates, the actual rates of bonds drop, which causes the value of older bonds. To increase okay as rates drop the value of older bonds gets higher so the people holding bonds um actually get more value on their money so this is right why you see this inverse relationship when people are in risk assets and they're scared they go to bonds but when they feel safe and comfortable and they're in bonds they go to risk and then the bond rates rise when that happens there's other feedback mechanisms that's very like that's definitely in a bit of an oversimplification, but um, in the immediate term, that's the kind of thing that happens. So um, nevertheless, one of the things that we've been talking about since forever is that when we see bonds start to violently crash towards the downside, as the yield curve inversion starts to violently move up, that is a very, very short, like a near term signal of an imminent crash. Um, this is something everybody knows, so I worry about how much this gets front run. Yet at the same time, this is the kind of signal that takes a lot of time to play out. So we've talked about this before. So this is the this is the 2020 crash, the pre-2020 crash, right? They, they raise the bond rates. Markets go up, markets go up. Um, they start lowering bond rates, uh, and then markets continue going up, and then, and then everything crashes. Same thing happened in 2000. If we scroll back here a little bit. Yeah, you, you get the market went up and up and up 2005, 2006, right? Even flat top 2007, they start lowering rates and it's still 2007, the market's still going up, right? But then at some point here, things really move violently um, and and then uh, and then the markets crash post haste. So we're, we're effectively looking at something like that right now. We're in that same pattern. It's, it happened in 2001 as well. So nevertheless, we're still not there. Like in terms of how long it takes these patterns to play out, it's usually at least months, right? We, th this, like you can see on this chart, the bond market hasn't even crashed down to these levels here yet, right? We're still technically above those levels. And okay, there was some, some news of the Fed and they're going to lower rates. Probably, we're not sure. They're, they're probably going to lower rates next meeting. And if not, they're going to definitely lower rates sometime this year, unless the inflation just goes crazy, which I don't think it is. The inflation's not going to go crazy. You know why? Because we're going to come over here and take a look at the civilian unemployment. And that's it's continuing towards the upside, right? 4.3 is still historically low, right? So it's it, this is not a problem, but this is called the SOM rule. And in fact, someone someone in the FOMC meeting asked about this. They said, hey, what about the SOM rule? The SOM rule says that once the unemployment has spiked beyond some certain threshold, um, recession is basically unavoidable. And we've we've hit that we've hit that quote unquote SOM rule point, S A H M. So, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's looking at the same stuff, guys. Everyone, everyone says, hey, you know, my God, it's about to crash. The problem is that, you know, people are impatient. People think short term. And so my guess right now, my best guess is that 
things are, are going to come back. This is just an ordinary pullback. In fact, if we go, let's go to the weekly now, and this is the NASDAQ. If we go to the weekly and we just say, okay, right? Like we talked about, this was currently a 12% pullback, but what was the last pullback? Oh, that was 8%. Okay. Um, on the way up. What about, what about this pullback right here? That's 12%, right? We lost 12% there. Now, obviously this is the March 2020 event. So that's minus 30%, but check this one out. That's minus 22% in bull market. In fact, let's go all the way back here to post 2008, right? So there's the 2008 dire crash. And then um, we had a 17% pullback and then we had a uh, 16% pullback, right? So, I mean, we could just keep doing this, right? 12%, another 12%. This is run of the mill, right? Guys, this is, there's 19%. This pullback that we have right here at the moment is a run of the mill pullback. And things are basically still trending along this major trend line um, that, that we would be looking at, right? Remember we talked about three or four weeks ago, this trend line right here is the major trend line for the NASDAQ right now. So at the moment, this is just an ordinary pullback. This is nothing, this is nothing to go crazy about. And we are not at the fully mature moment of all of our, our, our tail risk signals. So um, I, my guess is that that this thing's going to come back here. Maybe it won't, right? Maybe everyone's just front running, but eh, let's let's go even a little bit broader now. They're promoting um, <laughs> they're promoting Kamala, and if you want to do something interesting, you can look at what Kamala means in Finnish. Um, that's that's a slightly funny thing. Um, you can do that on your own time. Uh, but they're really promoting Kamala now, right? And now they're lying about the the polls, how she's like beating Trump in in all the polls now. No, she's not. Give me give me a freaking break. She, she's definitely not. Um, but you know they're they're getting the uh, they're getting a little the lie machine the deception machine all spun up again right to make this the most important election of our lifetimes, um, and so who knows right maybe they're just going to push that stock market back up. There's probably a lot of juice to squeeze from people that are panicking right now. There's probably juice to squeeze from people that are looking at all these signs like oh my god the, the crash is coming right and then, like those guys are are selling those guys are panicking they're going to push the market up and wreck those guys. That's that seems to be that's kind of the intuitive thing that I would think. Would be done here um so yeah that's 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 the macro guys that's kind of the backdrop um we could take a look the reverse repos um are flat still the dixie is, is basically flat it is very interesting to me that the dixie crashed here the dixie's gone down this week even as the stock market has also gone down um so that's that's quite interesting gold didn't quite respond to that dixie crash either so um yeah very um slightly slightly abnormal but probably with the u.s tenure dropping that that I bet you that there's some kind of signal there. <laughs> I bet if we dumped it into an AI, it would be able to make better sense of that pattern. Um, okay, so the last couple macro things we'll touch on here is, uh, so the M2 money supply has actually been rising, believe it or not. Um, that the, the last data that we have is for the end of the month of June, right, for the, for the June close. And so it's, that's a lagging data point, so just know that. Um, but if we take a look at stocks here, you'll notice that the end of June was right to right here. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. At the very top of the market, right? So that's the end of June right there at the top. Um, so the M2 money supply was increasing all the way through June, which kind of makes sense. Stocks are going up. You can use the stock valuations um, as to, to pledge them for loans from banks. Like it really is this fucking Ponzi scheme, guys. Like the way that they do this, like you get paid in stock options or whatever. You can use those, um, take those to the, if you're a CEO or whatever, or a company. You know, you can take your stock price or you can back a loan with 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 your own stock. Um, and as the stocks go up and the stocks go up because they printed more money because you backed them with loans. So the banks are like, here, here's a loan, which they printed from nothing. And then the stocks go up, right? In aggregate, this is kind of the action that happens. So that can only go so far. It can always only go so far. It's the nature of the system. Okay, I think you guys already basically know all that. Um, okay, so I think, let me check my notes here. Yeah. Okay. So I, th I think that's, that's pretty good that we basically covered the macro here. Um, let's take a look at gold. Gold is, gold is nice. Um, gold is doing actually pretty well. It's just hanging out here near those, near its all time highs. It's, you know, the, these, uh, these rising wedges are, you know, they're like the, the positive side of boring <laughs> in the sense they're like, okay, we're slowly going up. But you're like, when am I going to get my mad gains? Well, it might not happen just quite yet, but, um, yeah, gold is still just basically trending in this big, um, this wedge that we talked about this, uh, this rising wedge pattern. Um, so yeah, in a bullish environment, this usually breaks to the upside. Hopefully that's what we see happen. Um, I think, you know, there's still, there's still a ways to go there before, before gold really exhausts this particular run. Um, especially if we think that stocks still have the potential to go up. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there is there is a tail risk event coming, guys, and it's it's looming on the horizon now, and everyone actually sees it on the horizon. So it's like, um, it's it's more than just it's more than just speculation at this point. It's more than just like, okay, be careful. You know, we're these were in the past we've been like, hey, we're watching these things. Eventually, right, we're entering into that that series of snowball where it's like, okay, the events are set in motion now. Things look like they're going that direction. Maybe we haven't had the last tiny confirmation, but. Um, it's it's starting to get close to that foregone conclusion that that a big tail risk event is in the cards in the next let's just say uh, nine nine to twelve months or something. Um, okay, yeah, so that's um, that's the macro. I don't think there's I don't think we need to beat a dead horse there anymore. Let me just check and make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's all fine. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the the rest of the privacy coins here. Um, Xano, we talked about a little bit. This 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 is to be expected to be resistance most likely. It so far, has kind of turned out to be that way. Cool. Um, Firo, I don't know. I guess Firo is too much of an experimental coin. I don't really know what they're up to lately, but I never hear anyone like using Firo for, <laughs> for privacy needs. So I don't know. This is not this is not a good chart, if you ask me. Like I don't like the way this chart feels. Um, I don't know. Um, maybe we gotta go talk to those guys and see what the latest is. Um, right now, yeah. This, <laughs> oh God, that's terrible. Um, this is on the negative side of of their lower standard deviation, and everything's curling down. So. At this moment, this kind of pattern typically typically likes to to do this kind of like thing. Um, so yeah, Firo Firo might not be your best hold, your best speculation right now. Um, oh, Darrow, yeah, we we've talked about Darrow a few times here, right? Where we're saying, hey, this this area right here might actually be your spot to um to make some kind of swing trade. I know there's still Darrow people out there. They've gone terribly silent. <laughs> um, you know, I hope they didn't get too wrecked or whatever. Uh, but you know, guys, you got to you got to do your research and you got to understand that they were not using best practices. These signs were very clear. So, um, yeah, don't be staking your your net worth on some small coin with bad practices. Um, pirate chain. Also, speaking of small coins with bad practices, um, pirate chain is yeah just kind of chilling out here, I guess. I don't like the way this chart feels either. Honestly, this chart feels like it was meant to, especially if the crypto market were to take any kind of big downturn. This chart feels like it's it's destined. <laughs> I shouldn't say destined, but it feels like it's this would be a natural attraction point for the Darrow chart. In fact, if it hits there, or not Darrow, sorry, Pir Pirate. If Pirate, if R makes a big drop down there, I'll probably actually myself scoop some up. Believe it or not, I mean I'm not a huge R fan, but um, I am a, a degenerate gambler. So, um, but you know when the when the opportunity is right, it's right. That would be minus sixty percent though. So that is that is quite a ways down. Um, my guess is that uh, we'll see some pretty big movement in in like once things get bullish, right? Once they do the the liquidity expansion and everyone knows we're in like the next bull market and things are breaking the all time highs and okay, that's that's the time to to like buy these coins, especially especially. So okay, here's here's another way to think about this: the OG shit coins. We're talking stuff like ADA. Um, I don't want to mention that. You know what? Maybe I won't mention any particular coins. The OG shit coins that came out pre-2017, right? Those coins are, eh, I, I wouldn't expect too much from them. Yeah, they're probably going to finally break their all-time, their previous all-time highs, like Litecoin, for example. I wouldn't expect them to perform that much. They are old news. You want, like, the coins that came out last cycle that had a big run, those are the coins that are most likely, like, they're your best risk-to-reward balance. The, the highest performers are still going to be your absolute newest shit coins, like the absolute newest stuff. Those are going to be your highest performers. You just don't know which ones, right? Because so many of them are scams. Um, so you can't, it's hard to know which ones exactly. Um, but the ones that you know are very likely to do well are going to be the ones that release like 2018, 2019, right? 2020, that, that kind of era where we saw which ones of the ones performed well last time. Everyone's going to want to in on that action again. Now, they're not going to perform as well as they did back in 2021, but they're going to perform. In mind, that's your best risk to reward. So those are the coins I'd be looking at. Unfortunately, eh, you know, it's the Monero show. I'm not going to give you any particular shit coins to be looking at here, but there's a few of them that are pretty freaking obvious um, meme coin type chains. So make of that what you will. Um, and, uh, you know, again, be careful. Like we're not quite there. The The situation hasn't matured yet. We can't get massive liquidity expansion until we get the, the tail risk event. So that tail risk event is basically your opportunity to buy. Uh, so look in here at the Bitcoin chart. Um, yeah, we've, we've, let's go actually to the weekly. Okay. Oh, weekly's too, that's too much. Okay. Here we go. So our little, our little, um, run up to the bull market, right? This line right here, that's our big overall trend line. That's our headliner. Maybe we should even put that into two, two point, two point size, two pixel size line. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we're, we're oscillating around this line now. 
Um, like we said, we should expect this thing to take some time to consolidate. Personally, I think that that pullbacks are your opportunity to get in to Bitcoin. Um, you just don't know when this thing could break out, right? That's how this chart performs. Like overall, it's like it goes up in these massive, massive bumps, and then it just consolidates and bleeds, and then it pumps, it bow fake out, and then bleed, and then and then it pumps again, and then it massively pumps. Like okay, so these bleed out times are typically on balance of probabilities your opportunity to get in. Um, so right now we're on a pullback. Who knows how far this thing can go? Notice that again, this is a um, this is a broadening structure, right? Um, some call it a bullhorn pattern. So we've got the resistant resistance line up there. If I can say my S's so I can get that success. Um, we got this this broadening structure here. So it could very well be possible that this chart actually goes down to the bottom here before coming to the top side. That's that's within the range of like what the what the technical pattern is is setting there. So um, I wouldn't even probably wait for this absolute bottom. I, honestly, uh, like if okay if we get a tail risk event and it comes sooner rather than later, and we get like a liquidity destruction, demand destroying, whatever. Um, okay, this chart's going down. This chart is this chart would end up going down to the regression analysis. And in fact, that's on a tail risk event. That's exactly what I want to see. That is exactly where I want to see this chart go down to. Um, let's pull up the regression analysis here really quick. Oh, it always does that. There we go. Okay. So um, at the moment, the green line is your buy line, right? That's your like sell everything and buy Bitcoin, R really more like sell everything and buy crypto, crypto, not Bitcoin. Um, and right now this line, this green line as of today would be sitting at 28,000, um, at 27,000. So, I mean, that's pretty good guys. Like remember this line used to be sitting at like 14,000 down here. Now we're at 28,000. This thing rises, 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 and it rises fast, uh, especially if you're patient. So um, yeah, right now, uh, in the short term, I would say that this is a buying opportunity. Um, it's just a regular buying opportunity. Don't go heavy leverage on it, but there's a good chance things go here and then bounce back up. Maybe it doesn't have to go all the way down, right? It, it could just kind of stop here and then, and then move back up, whatever. Who knows? I'm not, I don't have any big opinions on the exact way this chart plays out. But the point is that this is a buy zone and that this is a leverage zone. Like if we touch this line, guys, I am going leverage long on Bitcoin. Um, I'm, I'm taking a long-term, like probably not that much leverage, but I might even stagger actually. I, like, like I would hypothetically put a large amount on like 2X leverage, and then I would stagger up on like a slightly smaller amount on 5X, and then a small amount on like 10X leverage or 20X leverage. Um, you have to realize 20X leverage, a 5% move wipes you out. So if you get 5% below this line, you're done. So that's why you don't, um, that's why you don't put your whole stack on 10 X leverage. Um, even though you're like the problem with leverage is that you can be basically right and then still get wiped out. Um, that's, that's just how that works. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, we touched the screen line guys. I'm going leverage long. It's really that simple. So it's, that's just like slap you in the face, easy money. Um, and unless the world just like, like goes to world war three or something, right. Okay. In which case you've got bigger problems. It is a probability. So it, it, yeah. You know, unfortunately that does look like stupid Stupid things are happening out there, and it's kind of pissing me off. Um, yeah, we've got the Iran-Israel thing going on where Israel, like, within, like, one minute, just drone killed, like, five leaders of Iran, just, like, like da -da -da -da, just took them out. And then Iran's like, we vow revenge. So now they're, I don't know, they're going to go to war some shit. Um, and then they're, like, faking the numbers for Kamala, so maybe they actually do want to steal the election again. <laughs> in, in which case, that's, like... That's a possible civil war trigger. And it's like, fuck, maybe I will go to Argentina after all. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, other than that, you know, uh, everything else is, what Bitcoin did, everything else did the same thing. We're basically just in a big pullback. Um, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Again, I, I think this is buying opportunity. Maybe the buying opportunity isn't like perfect, hasn't crystallized in the short term to perfection. Um, but uh, but it, but it, but it, there's there's some good opportunity here, I think, coming up to make some some purchases. So um, even the orange man wasn't able to pump Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, they're out there, man. They're trying. Let's see. Check two year minus 10 year treasury. So um, Planto, do we have time for, for some questions or do you guys want to get the show show rolling? I don't I don't want to take up too much time here. Uh, looks like one question, which is check two year to 10 year treasury. Okay, yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna cover there. I'm so bad. Like, I just get into the, I get into the flow, and then I forget to look at everyone's questions. Um, okay, so yeah, keep going, <clears throat> keep going, keep going. So, um, so Planto, what we have here, this is this is like my my big picture bond chart. So the two red lines here uh, reflect 
taking all of the different bonds, right? So we've got, let's, let's here, let's expand this on the left here. We have the three month, the six month, the one, two, five, 10, 20, and 30 year. So we could look at the two minus the 10. We could look at the five minus the one. What we do, what this script does here on the bottom is it takes every single one of these and subtracts it from every single other one of these. So we know what the aggregate picture looks like of the yield curve inversion, right? And then we just average that all together. So these lines tell us how overall inverted the yield curve is. Uh, because like, if you think of how many combinations there are, what that would be like one, two, three, four, that would be like eight factorial or something like some, some crazy amount of, of combinations. Um, so we really couldn't look at all of them, but since you asked, we, we definitely, um, we could definitely do that. So you said U S 10 year minus the U S two year. Oh, that's zero two year. Um, yeah. So this thing is correcting, definitely correcting back. Um, we're, we're, it's still not at the zero point yet, right? It's still technically inverted. Um, Let's go to the weekly, actually, make that a little bit easier. Look at the history. Yeah, so this chart goes all the way back to 2013. It has been dropping, dropping, dropping to being ever more inverted. It has been the most inverted that it ever was here for the year of 2023. It's currently, it's still not quite at the zero point. So technically, it's still inverted. Um, let's see. What are the questions we got here? Uh, no. Okay, yeah. I guess that's about it. Um, I wasn't sure if there's anything in particular that you wanted to see, um, Planto on on the uh on that chart but um yeah that's the way magic that doesn't work out well um uh, but yeah i think that's about all i got for you guys today uh, so i'll hand it back over to oh one thing i just want to shill just a little bit i'm gonna have a um a debate with uh, i don't know if you guys uh, any of you on twitter probably have seen super testnet um has been um trash talking monero's privacy and uh up talking lightning network privacy which of course is silly um, so we're going to have a debate today at 2 p.m. If you guys want to tune into that to Twitter spaces, um, welcome to show up. Oh, I say 2 p.m. That's 2 p.m. Mexico time. Um, I guess that would actually be like 4 p.m. Would that be 4 p.m.? Who are you, who are you debating, buddy? Uh, his name is Super Testnet. So he's kind of like, he's one of the more technically proficient plebs. Um, I don't, actually, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I'm told that by friends. <laughs> he's like friends of friends. So um, we're actually going to be live together in the same place. So um, it'll be a, a cool conversation. Um, oh, awesome. What's the what's the topic? What are you guys talking we're about? We're basically debating Lightning Network versus Monero privacy. He claims that Lightning Network is private. I think that's silly. Um, he thinks that Monero, or I think Monero is private, um, and he thinks that's silly. So <laughs> um, we actually, he's been kind of trolling on Twitter, and people have been going back and forth. And then um, we went to kind of the same event. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? It's kind of a small event. So I was like, hey, you're just like trolling, right? And he's like, no. I was like, you're not serious, are you? He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, oh, well, OK. So why don't we like have a spaces and All right. hash this out? So that's too yeah, Mexico he's, time, uh... which is like, or go ahead, sir. Oh, no, I was going to say, maybe you get him to come to Monero to present Bitcoin Lightning privacy tech. If he's if he's got the chops, you know maybe I'll uh, I'll pitch that to him. Maybe he is interested. All right. Speaker spot. Yeah, yeah. He's more okay. we're more than happy to have page and tell everybody how Lightning is is more private than than Monero, and then let comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very very <laughs> funny statement. A riotous laugh will be had by all. And then, uh, oh, you know, I wanted to also say thanks for the reminder on I need I need to personally do my part to shill um, the conference on my own Twitter. I don't I don't shill it nearly enough. So I'm going to make a I'm going to make a, a concerted effort to do more of that. All righty. All right, man. Hey, awesome. guys, after today's show, feel free to tune in to Twitter spaces and. Uh, you know, if you guys got any good technical arguments to bring, we'll probably spend 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour debating. And then, you know, as usual, we'll open up the floor. So, all right, with that, guys, I'll hand it back to uh, Tux and Doug. Thank you, sirs. Thanks, buddy. Cool.